Live from Stanford University, it's theCUBE, covering the Women in Data Science Conference 2017. Hi, I'm Lisa Martin, welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at Stanford University at the second annual Women in Data Science Conference. It's a one day tech conference. And we are joined by Julie Yu, who is the founder and chief data scientist of Pymetrics. Julie, you are on the customer panel today. So welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, great to you be here. Have, it's great to have you, such an interesting background. Thank you. Um, neuroscience meets engineering, or engineering meets neuroscience. Yep. Would love to, for folks to understand a little bit more about those two, how, they, how they're combined, and also mm -hmm. um, about Pymetrics. But give us a little bit of a background uh, as a women, woman in the sciences, how you got to where you are now. So, as you mentioned, I, my, back, my background's in computer engineering, and I went into a PhD program in electrical and computer engineering because I wanted to study artificial intelligence. I was fascinated by the notion of artificial intelligence. So my research topic started in automatic speech recognition system, as in building computers to decode and decipher human speech. And after a couple of years, I got sort of frustrated with just the engineering approach or statistical methods-based approach to improving the existing speech recognition systems that are out there. Because I thought to myself, we're trying to make computers understand human speech and mimic human function when we don't really understand how our brain works. And I don't really know exactly what happens when you listen to you speak, when I listen to you speak, and when you listen to I speak, like what is going on? We didn't really have a good sense, so I wanted to study neuroscience. So I could quit engineering, and I went into PhD program in neuroscience, and there I started doing a lot of neuroimaging study, just looking at human cognition and just figuring out what is going on when people perceive and process these signals that are out there. And was your idea to eventually marry the two? I didn't really think about it that way, but it just sort of happened, as in like, my background in engineering did sort of hold me into doing some of the projects that I did when I was doing my PhD and my postdoc, and while I was doing all that, I just sort of evolved to be a data scientist without really me realizing I was doing everything that a typical data scientist would do. And this was even before 2008. The job title of data scientist wasn't even around then. Right. So, so it, it sort of happened because of where I came from and because of what I was interested in. And as I was doing that, like, it just ended up being a good marriage. And yeah. then there it was. Talk to us about, tell people what Pymetrics is and, and what the genesis of this company was. Right, so Pymetrics is a platform that uses neuroscience-based games and data science to promote predictive and bias-free hiring. So how it became, um, a, product was because I was going through postdoc and my co-founder was also going through business school and we were both going through the phase of, okay, we don't want to stay in academia, what do we want to do with our lives? And at the time we realized a lot of the career advising tools that are out there were not scientific and they were not data driven and we felt that there is a clear need for a tool that can actually use all these data that are out there to help people figure out what they should be doing with their lives. So I thought we thought that we were uniquely positioned to use our background in engineering and neuroscience and build a product that could actually solve these challenging problem. And that's how we started Pymetrics. That's fantastic. You started about three years ago in 2013. Mm -hmm. So really getting rid of some of the biases. Share with us what some of the biases are. Is it, is it test scores, SATs, uh, MCATs, GPAs? Well, there are many, many different kinds of biases in hiring process right now. I think uh, there is a preconception of what an engineer should look like, and I think that plays a lot. And when you do go into an interview, like how you look and how you dress, that's, that adds to the bias. There's ethnic bias, there's gender bias, and there is bias based on test scores and the, and what school you went to. So we want to we want to sort of remove ourselves from that and really get down to what person, what kind of person you are and are you really, uh, uh, I guess, have the right set of skills to, to succeed in certain job functions. And we do that by measuring your, instead of taking your subjective like answers from questionnaires, we do that by objectively measuring your behavior. And these games are based on neuroscience research, so we know that they actually measure things that we want them to measure. Like for instance, 
your ability to pay attention, your risk appetite on all those things that we think matters as to what makes you good at certain things and not so good at some other things. So we use these objective data and data science and predictive modeling to, to come up with predictions as to how good you will be in a certain career versus some other career. Really an incredible need for that. So, mm -hmm. so it's game-based. So it's an actual game that people will play mm -hmm. that will help understand more of who they are as a person, their behaviors, those patterns. Tell yep. us a little bit about the, the invention of the game. What was it like? Who was it for? Right, what so are the uh, games were actually sourced from neuroscience research community. We did, not, we did not create these games. What we did was we actually just took them from research and medical settings and applied it through hiring. And we know that these are relevant to measuring your attributes and your personality. So why not use it for hiring and just career advising? Because it makes sense. We're trying to measure your qualities, your soft skills and whatnot. Why not just use it for something that could really benefit from these sort of data? Uh, we, what we did though is we actually made these games. They're not really called games in research community, but we made it shorter and we made it more applicable to the things that we are trying to use it for. Because you, yeah. you, you took feedback from some of your early adopters mm -hmm. who were saying, maybe it's taking me too long, maybe mm -hmm. some of the recruiters might say, um, it, you know, they gave you some very viable feedback that have helped you optimize the, the product. Right, I mean, as a data scientist, I always think the more data, the better, but that also means that people would have to sit in front of their computers and play an hour long um, battery of games, right. and uh, a lot of people were thinking that it might be just a tad too long, <laughs> and companies felt that spending 45 minutes to an hour is could be a discouraging thing, and people felt fatigue effect, and we could see that in the results. So we ended up making it shorter. We, we went from 20 games to 12 games, and we cut it down to 25 minutes long, and I think now we are in the sweet spot where we do get enough data, but at the same time, we're not we're not making it like an hour long. Right, so this is really targeted for um, people coming out of university programs, whether mm -hmm. it's bachelor's, master's, mm -hmm. doctorate, et cetera. And also, what type of companies who are looking to hire, what's kind of the, your, your target market for that? So I think mostly like Fortune 500 companies, because a lot of these companies do hire in large volumes, so it is, it helps to have um, us go to these companies and build their models based off of their employees. And if a c smaller company comes along and they only have 10 employees in the job function, then it's extremely difficult for us to mo build a model based off of their 10 employees. Whereas if it's a larger corporation, then we can have 200 employees play and we can build a model based on their data. Okay. So, yeah, so generally large corporations is our target client. I'm curious in yeah. terms of some of the data that you're seeing that you're mm -hmm. analyzing, are you seeing, if we look at data science as a, as a great example of the event that we're at, um, in report from Forbes recently that said yep. it's the best job to apply for in 2017. We're looking at now what's going to be happening predicted over the course of the next year, and that's a shortage in talent. Are you seeing, with some of the data that you're taking in, are you seeing th things that are mapping to that, like people that are really geared towards that, or are you seeing more companies that are looking for um, computer industry data science type roles? Is that increasing as well? I think there's, I think every, like companies are definitely looking for more data scientists, and I think also people are, figuring out that there are data science programs, like graduate school programs, and I think the supply of data scientists is definitely increasing, but at the same time, or more so, the demand for data scientists is increasing. And not to mention, the available data that's out there is increasing at a faster rate than anything else. Right. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, is, it is, I think, the best time to be a data scientist right now. And, and let me ask you uh, one more question about yep. looking at skills. Yep. So we have such a great cross-section mm -hmm. at this event of, of leaders in retail, mm -hmm. in um, obviously what you're doing for in, in, the, in the neuroscience gaming merging world. We've got professors here. It's such an, data science is such an interesting topic. It's, it's obviously, very horizontal. From a skill set perspective, kind of the traditional skills of being a statistician, yep. mathematics, um, being a hacker, 
a lot of things that we've been hearing around the show today and really aligns with what you're doing is more on the behavioral insight side of you have to be able to communicate what, what you're yep. seeing and be able to apply it. Yep. I'd love to understand the profile of an ideal data scientist that you guys are seeing from your data. What are some of the other mm. behavioral mm. attributes that maybe are some of the non-teachable things that you're seeing that really come up that this would be a great career path for someone? I think, personally, I think like intellectual curiosity is number one. And they would have to have strong self-motivation and discipline because you could love like analyzing data and you could just be doing that for how many days, I don't know, and, and that's it. You need to be able to actually come up with a good story. You gotta be a good storyteller. And if you have artistic flair to make the data viz like beautiful, then even better. But it is important to go from beginning of the project where you have a bunch of data set and actually come up with actionable results that people can use. And you're not only always gonna be communicating with the data scientist. So you do need to be able to present your data in a more succinct and easily digestible way. So that sounds yeah. like, you know, as the chief data scientist mm -hmm. for Pymetrics, that's what that's who you're looking for to hire yeah. on your team. Give us yeah. a little bit, uh, last question here, just a little bit of an overview of what your data science team looks like at Pymetrics as you're helping to leverage this data to, to uh, give people opportunities with careers. What does your team look like? Our team has um, very diverse backgrounds. We have a few PhDs in physics, and we, <laughs> and well, I have PhD in neuroscience, and there's um, another data scientist with PhD in physics. We actually have one guy who majored in data science, and we have another guy who majored in bioengineering. And yeah, so it's it's definitely diverse background, but general theme is that you do need a good um, quantitative foundation. So whether it's engineering or physics, it is it, it helpful to have that statistical or analytical mind. And if you can actually apply that, then and actually love solving problems, then I think data scientist is a right role so you're at on, Pymetrics. Sorry yeah. for interrupting. You're on the career panel mm -hmm. at, at WIDS 2017. Mm -hmm. Is that the advice that you would give to kind of the next generation of kids that are interested in this but aren't quite sure what industry they would want to go into? What industry? I think, I mean, if they're even remotely interested in going into data science, I would encourage them to pursue it. I, I think it is one of the most fascinating fields right now, and there's go never going to be a shortage of needs for data scientists. So if you like it, if you think you are going to be pretty good at it, I'd say go for it. Fantastic. Yeah. And you've got a great audience here. This is being um, live streamed in... Uh, 20 cities, oh, yeah. I think across the globe, or 75 cities, I have to get the stats right. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a big opportunity here to be an influencer, and we thank you, thank you for spending some time with us today. Best of luck on the panel. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We, I'm Lisa Martin. We are live with theCUBE at Women in Data Science 2017, hashtag WIDS 2017. Stick around, we'll be right back.